Hello everyone, as you know I am Paul your eHobby guy and in a previous video I built this spy bug which is essentially an FM transmitter. There's a microphone here and it transmits in the FM frequency range. It can be listened to with any FM radio and this reminded me of a kit that I bought more than 20 years ago. It's called Super Snooper Big Ear Audio Amplifier. And so I thought it'd be a good idea today to go through this build. These kits are really good, especially for beginners. They teach you about the components, orientation, polarity, and some of the general concepts and get you used to soldering. So we'll go through the build. We'll look through the instructions to see how good they are and see how it performs. So let's jump right in. Okay, so let's just see here what we've got. Put that over there. Let's take a look at the instructions. Okay. Yes, the instructions are actually seem to be quite good. In general, a lot of these Chinese kits, the instructions are not the greatest and even can contain mistakes. So we'll put that over there for now. Let's see what we have. Okay, we have a capacitor, variable resistor, printed circuit board, there's an IC and an IC socket, another IC socket. So I have two IC sockets with one IC. Which I find kind of curious. There's the IC. So we do have two ICs, two IC sockets. There we go. Capacitors, three capacitors. There's our little microphone. These are polarized capacitors, non polarized capacitors, and a total of five resistors. Of course, this is a 9 volt battery lead, so it doesn't look too complicated. Yeah, here we have the LM386 IC. The other IC, let's see if we can get that. Yes, this seems to be the MC1458N. Not the clearest to make out, but we'll take a look at the sheet. Looking quickly here at the parts list, we do have the resistors here. It does tell me about the polarity, which is rare, on the two polarized capacitors. There are 47 microfarads and a 4.7 microfarad. The two IC sockets, but let's go to the other, the next page. It does tell us here the LM1458 which is a dual op amp and the LM386 is the amplifier and so again we have to watch for pin 1 here and make sure they get oriented and the sockets into the board correctly and so now let's jump into the actual build I just want to point out something here here you can see the R1 but right next to it is an R1A and so it made me think am I missing something I just want to count through R1, R1A, there's R6, which is the variable resistor, R2 and 3, 5, and R4 is here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have a feeling that the R1A is a resistor that you can put in parallel with R1 if you want to make a modification later. The schematic clearly is just showing R1 with nothing in the holes for what's labeled as R1A. So I'm going to move forward with the understanding that there's nothing in the R1A and R1 is directly next to the microphone. Okay, so R1 is 3.3K. I just tested it because I definitely do not want to get that wrong. Just push that through, bend them out a little. R2 is up here. So let's get R2, that's a 1K resistor, 1 kilo ohm I should say. K, 
Okay, R3. R3 is right next to R4. Just to let you know, my process is to get all the resistors in first, flip that over, solder all of them on, and then move on to the next component, which in this case would probably be capacitor. So that's three resistors in place, just a little bent over so they don't fall out when I turn over. Four and five next. Or five goes in here. Okay. Let's flip it over. I may have put too many on, but we'll try and get through it. Okay, that finishes the resistors getting soldered on. Let me trim these off. Looking at the capacitors next. Now, C1 is right here, and C2 is up here. If you notice, there's actually three holes for capacitor C1. The capacitors have two legs. And so I just wanted to point out, if we look at C1, for example, we just flip this over. These three holes are the three holes for C1. You'll notice that the top two holes here are joined together. So as long as we get one leg into this hole, it doesn't matter which of these holes the other leg gets into. The hole for C1 that's closest to this end, I want to make sure I get one leg in there and the other leg can go into either one of these two. This hole here I'm, I'm concerned with. Now these are pretty close together so I'm just gonna go into the holes that are closest to each other. Spread these out and just take a double check. Yep, right there I can see I have one in the hole that's by itself and then the other hole right next to it is perfectly fine right there. Now let's look at C2. It's very similar up here. Yes, I have to get one leg into the hole. Let me point them out to you. C2, it's these three holes. As long as I get one leg into the hole that's closest to the center of the board, that's good. And the hole that's right next to it is perfectly fine too. So again, the hole that's closest to the center of the board for C2. Here is C2. You get one in the hole that's closest to the center. Push that down there. Let's get those soldered on. Now let's take a look at the polarized capacitors. Now C3 is the 47 microfarad capacitor. And 4 and 5 are the same. They're both 4.7 microfarads. We have to watch polarity with these capacitors. And just to point out with these capacitors, almost always we have marked, this is a negative sign. And so this is the negative leg of the capacitor. And now for C3, they mark the positive side right here. There's my negative. I have to straighten these legs out in order to get this to work. That's C3, plus is up here, minus is down here. C4 is right here, and C5 is right here. And that's these. Once again, you can see clearly this is the negative side. The board is marked with a plus. And so the plus has to go into that side. Now IC sockets present a challenge when soldering because the legs are actually very short and so when we insert them in the board, when we turn it over, the minute we touch it falls out. We can't really bend the legs over. What I do is always keep some of this stuff around, removable mounting putty. And so I'll just grab a blob of that, get the IC in place. Now, the orientation of the IC socket matters. There's a groove here, and it's screen printed right on the board, the groove. So we want to make sure those grooves line up, or notches, whatever you want to call it. And now I hold it in place, stick that there like that. And now we're ready to solder that socket on.
Okay, that's one on. Let's get the other one on. And that's IC socket number two. The only remaining things are the variable resistor, the microphone, and the battery leads. The variable resistor is the orientation, it's predetermined by the three legs. They can only fit one way, so it must go in that way. These are a little longer, so I'll just bend two of them over a little bit. The power we can see here is a plus and a minus. Here is a speaker, which we'll check into. Maybe we can attach a speaker to it. Power plus here, power minus here. We'll get the power lead on. There we go. Plus being red, black being minus. Next is the microphone. And clearly the microphone is marked here. Now one thing it doesn't say on this side of the board, or on the reverse side, is the polarity. Because these do have polarity. Red being positive, black being negative. Now let's take a look at the schematic and I want to point one other thing out to you after that. Clearly here we can see that the terminal on the right hand side when looking from the top is the positive terminal of the mic, the left being the negative. Now let's look at the back. Looking back here again, the terminal on the right hand side being positive when looking from the top. Now I'm going to flip it over and that right hand side is going to be the left terminal from underneath. And what I specifically want to point out here is the solder pad underneath is a square solder pad. The negative is round. That's just one other check if you had no documentation and you had to take an educated guess. This is a convention that is used to help people who are doing this. Square solder pad, round solder pad, square being positive, round being negative. Positive being red, negative being black. Let's get it soldered on. Just two things I want to point out, a mistake that I made. This variable resistor, or, or pot, potentiometer, is labeled R7. Over here is R6, and it says volume. I made a mistake. If we look at the schematic, R6 is clearly has volume written and is next to the IC that's on top. And so I'm going to have to move this from here to here. Let's get that done. Next is the IC sockets, just to insert them. Of course, I just want to point out the notch here represents the orientation, or indicates which way we should orient it, pin 1 being here, 1, 2, 3, 4 in a counterclockwise direction, all the way up to 8 on this side. What's labeled U1 is the LM, LM1458N, that is U1. And U1 goes down to the chip that's closest to, it's closest to the microphone. Uh, I have to bring it in a little more. Uh, there's a problem. We got a little buckling. So let me fix this. Let's fix it with my finger. Yes, you do have to be careful inserting these sockets. Pins are easy to damage. We'll get them all lined up properly. There we go. Everything looks good. Now, of course, we have to have a speaker with this because I realized there's no oscillator, there's no inductor, where this isn't transmitting anything. And so we have to hardwire a speaker. It could be a set of headphones. Um, I'll just look to see what kind of speaker I have and we'll get it soldered in right here so that we can see how this performs. Okay, so here I have a bunch of scavenged speakers. Uh, this guy should work out just fine. We'll see how it goes using this. First I'll just tin, tin the wires before I get them on the board. Make it a little easier. This speaker was not included with the kit, so if you are thinking about it, you would have to have a speaker of your own or a set of headphones that you would uh, 
put in here. Now, I just want to mention, I did get this kit from Jamical. This is not, a, it's not an ad for Jamical. They didn't give it to me. I bought it. I did check. It is still available, but like I said, it's a ridiculously high price. We've come to this full build. I set my power supply to 9 volts. So I'm just going to attach this and let's see. First power up, let's go. Woo. That's actually a good sign. I'm going to make an adjustment here. I'm not sure which way is up or down, so I'm just going to go all the way to one extreme on the pot. And we'll try that again. As yes, I can hear the static, which is good. Now, with me talking, I'm just going to turn it slowly. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. I'm all the way at the other extreme. Yes, I can hear it. It is sensitive. I'm just going to go for the feedback. Yes. So it is sensitive. In order to do a proper test of this, and I can feel the speaker, you probably can't hear it, but I can feel the vibration. Let me hold it up to my microphone. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing. This is now a fully functioning assistive listening device is what I would call it even though let's just disconnect power for a second for this to be useful uh, it is called a super snooper big ear audio amplifier so it is just an amplifier so really for this to be functional something that you can actually use this would be something the only thing that's coming to mind is if you're hard of hearing in a movie theater you could get this mounted in a box similar to what I did here I would certainly extend these leads one thing about electret microphones I will show you really quickly here on continuity mode if you did desolder the microphone the negative polarity does matter here I'm gonna have this yes I do have my beeper on but the negative since it's not marked on the microphone is always the one do a continuity test from the outside case to the negative it's directly shorted to the outside case and so if you did have a microphone and you wanted to check which one was the negative you can always do that quick check from the positive you get nothing the negative you get continuity for this to be really useful obviously we'd use a, a 9 volt battery I would get a different uh, potentiometer let me grab one really quickly something like this and I would mount it onto the inside of a casing of some sort I'd make an on off switch breaking the negative on the power and of course I would either have headphones or a speaker. I'm thinking in a movie theater, if you wanted to turn up and, and amplify the, the sound, you could use this, something like that. Or even if you're hard of hearing and you want to hear what's going around in a table, this is something that could be used. I can't really compare it to this previous project that I built because uh, this is an FM transmitter. Same circuitry to grab the sound and amplify it, but this also transmits. All in all, the build for this was not bad. As you can see, it was pretty quick. You can decide for yourself if you like it. It was definitely a quick and easy build. Look out for the things that I told you to look out for. They're very similar uh, as far as all kit builds are concerned, where you have to be worried about polarity of capacitors, microphones, DC power of course. The little things like the three holes for a capacitor that only requires two. Just look around, see if you can see which two are the two required. That concludes today's video. I hope uh, you enjoyed it and maybe, maybe it was useful to you. Remember, follow me on social media. Click that circle with my picture in the middle to subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos in my YouTube channel and my website. See you next time.